God bless you, God bless you, and welcome to another show of the Brinson Institute. We're so glad that you have joined us on this day and this hour and this time, even though we're coming from Chicago, it's kind of like cold over here, it's about 19 degrees, and it's, 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 it's it's, it's, it's something how sometime we were just having a little difficulty, but that's all right. We're back now in process. I just wanted to take some time out to share with you what God is doing and what he's doing in the land. And we're glad to be here another day, another week, and sharing with you what God is doing and how he is working in the land. I am just excited and excited by what God is doing and happy that he has continued to bless us and bless you, you, and you, and you. So we want to take some time out today as we are coming to the end and close of the year, 2019, and moving into 2020. I would like really to uh, really begin to uh, take a look at some things and share with you today. And so while you are coming on and those of you that are getting ready uh, to be a part of this process, I want you to... Uh, Look at, look at it, hit your share button, hit the share button, and uh, we're going to share, share to your group, share to your friends, and what God is doing, and I want to be able to uh, connect with some of our people, and um, those in the Brinson Connection, I want to take time out to thank all of our watchers in the Brinson Connection group that's been a part of what we've been doing, and I thank God for you, you, and you, and you, and you. So, we just want you to be blessed today, and I'm taking my time out and writing blessings <laughs> on on my uh, my uh, phone here, and uh, I'm sure that we're excited also about what God is doing in the land. So I just want to take some time out to uh, to thank all of you for all this year that's been working with us and sowing into the kingdom and calling us and being a part of our ministry is process and all the things that we have been doing all this year and that God has been blessing us and as we prepare to go into 2020, I really believe that the body of Christ now more than ever before, we need to be able to come together to work together. Some of the things that I have uh, been talking with and sharing with some of our brothers and sisters and leaders in the body of Christ, I really want to challenge you. I think that what we need to do is to begin to collaborate together and come together. The Bible talks about uh, in Ephesians, he gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, some to be pastors and teachers to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry. It goes on to talk about till we come into the unity of the faith. One of the things as we move toward the unity of the faith to accomplish that is that we need to begin to share with each other and one another. My concern and challenge is that as we move towards sharing with each other and one another, as we cross fertilize ourselves, we need to begin to look at our own tribe. The question that is before us is what tribe, what party? God, I believe God equips us and he gives us gifts, talents, and graces. And we need to also know who's among us of like grace. As we get together and find our team, our, tri our tribe, who sings our song, then it's easy for us to make melody and make harmony out of melody. Some of us, as we have gone through 2019, you know you have not been aligned. And so my challenge to you is that as we move into 2020, that you begin to ask God to give you wisdom and to providentially connect you with those persons of like measure. You need to be aligned with people of like measure. Some of us, we have, been, we have certain calls on our life, certain gifts, certain graces on our lives that we're not utilizing because we're not aligned with the right people. That does not mean that people are bad. No, it means that you have not aligned yourself with the right people that God would have you to be with. And sometimes we do not do that. And because we don't do that, we have a tendency sometimes to uh, make it sound like it's other people's fault. 
it's other people. We blame other people because they don't do and they don't Apostle Brinson see, they don't understand me. They don't they don't understand what I'm going through. They don't understand what I've been through. Well, sometimes it's not about people understanding, but it's maybe it's because you have not aligned yourself with your group. You know the story talked about uh, the eagle in the chicken patch until he heard the sound. Something moved him. What moves you? Who are you connected with? So as we move to the year 2020, I want to challenge my brothers and sisters in the body of Christ that you need to start being connected with the right kind of people who are your type. So much frustration, so much anxiety in the land today, and you don't need to have anxiety and frustration and pain and all kinds of things going on in your life because you have made the wrong choice or the wrong decision or because you're not sensitive to what God is saying to you or calling you to be. And so we need to do that. As we move into 2020, we need to make our calling and election sure to be making sure that we are connected and aligned with the right group of people, even though they're in ministry. Even though that, because it's important because when God calls you, did you not know that when God calls you and give you purpose, there's a certain timing and a certain season that he wants to use you with a certain given group of people. And something, something sometimes we can jump ahead of God and be before our time. We can, we can linger and be behind time or we can be in time and season and just be lazy, lethargical. Either way it goes, we need to make sure that we love God with all our heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength, and our neighbor as ourselves. So I'm challenging the body of Christ and you that are watching me to make sure that as we move into 2020, and as you move into 2020, you begin to really take some time out and talk to the Lord and make sure that where you are, you're in the right place. I didn't say you have to like it, but where you are, this is where God have you for at this moment. That you are clear of your season. You are clear because once, once, once God put you somewhere or assigned you someplace, there's a peace that comes over you. There's still going to be the struggle of life, the day-to-day -day routine, the enemy is going to challenge you. The principalities are going to war. But you, there has to be some kind of sense of peace in your spirit, in your soul, in your heart, that I'm in obedience. This is where God has me for right now. This is my assignment for right now. And then be comfortable in doing it. Be comfortable in doing it. When I say be comfortable in doing it, I mean no matter what happens and what goes along with the territory, you got to be able to say, but I got to be comfortable in doing it because this is my assignment. And so if God has me at this place or over here for a season, I need to enjoy the ride. I need to not be complaining, not be combative, not be frustrated, not whining and crying and upset and frustrated. No, 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 no. I need to begin to think about what's good and what's lovely and what's of a good report while I am in that position. You know, sometimes it really, I look at it and some of us, I hear some of my brothers and sisters or will say, this is, where God, this is where I feel God wants me for right now. I really feel that, but I'm frustrated. I really, I feel that, but I, I just don't want to be. I just, why so many? And so while we're on assignment and agree that the assignment is ours, we look at all the negativity of the assignment and we stay frustrated and we don't push and give all that we have to the glory of God and utilizing his gifts, talents, and graces on that assignment is because we have some issues with the people, the place, or the thing, or the surroundings. So as we begin to move forward in 2020, we need to lay aside all of those things. All of those things. The, the, you know, there's always, there's always going to, we, we can come up with a lot of excuses. We can come up with a lot of statements. We can come up with, we, I, if, if we all sat down, and I guess they call it, we're, for instance, I'm just being transparent. Well, you, we all sat down and be transparent. We'd probably be frustrated by the end of the day. Because if we're not 
in our transparency saying even though this looks like this this looks like that people tend to when they want to be transparent they want to go to the negative side because a lot of people don't want to hear your positive so you stay in the negative to get that's because you need you you need to have what they call I, I just need some attention I need some validation uh, so you go there uh, in the name of transparency no 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 you don't need to do that that's called compromise we don't need to compromise ourselves. We need to move forward in what God has called us to do. One of the challenges to the body of Christ is to go make disciples. Go make disciples. He told, he, he told, he told the, his disciples, you know, go preach the gospel to every creature. Go to all the world and preach the gospel. Go make disciples. Make disciples. Somehow, we got discipleship and disciple making interrelated with soul winning. So we'll go out on the evangelistic trail and do soul winning, pass out tracts, give out some food, give out some toys, but we don't sit down and identify a person or a group of people that we can just share with, talk with, be ourselves, let them feel the real us as we share and exchange what it means to be a human person in our world and as we trans where as we transmit information back and forth to each other we begin to understand that we have some like passions we have some like issues we have some joys and some sorrows so how then do i really take time to move off of just winning souls i'm out soul winning i'm bringing in souls to the kingdom how do I, at the same time, understand that challenge of bringing souls in or drawing them in to accept Christ that I need to teach and train and mentor them? Where is that? And we need to be able to say, my job, ask yourself the question, who discipled you? Were you discipled? Well, Apostle Branson, I, you know, I don't know, I just... I was when I was little. I was born in. I was born in the church. My family took me to church. I didn't have no option. And then I just somehow eh, stayed on in the church. Or I left the church, but I'm back now. And blah blah blah. So what are you back for? Are you back for what the benefits of that particular church can give to you? Or are you back because you want to become a part of the kingdom of God as members of the body of Christ at that church, listening and looking at the vision? of the leadership and get on board and move in the direction of that saved ministry. One of the things that's very important that you and I begin to understand is to be clear with God's calling on your life, the timing and the movements and the purpose for which you are called are crucial. Very crucial. Very crucial. You cannot afford to waste time. Now, especially in 2020. You cannot afford to waste time. You cannot afford not to be on target. You cannot afford to talk around the issue. You have to come straight to the chase. Let me just say something because as an apostle, uh, God called me to the apostleship and we will confirm and, 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 and celebrate it over 22 years old, 22 years ago. Um, and now I hear people, you know, Brinson, I don't know, all these apostles running around here. You got all these apostles, all these apostles. No, no, the, we're not going to take the assignment and the gifting of what Jesus left in the earth as he ascended to his father to build the kingdom through the church because of a couple of people that's out posturing themselves as apostles and they don't have the slightest clue of what the apostolic and apostleship is, the prophetic, and how do you become and certified and all that. So one of the things that I wanted to do, I, I wanted to challenge you in 2020, those of you that have a ministry that you, that you know, you know that this is your ministry. I want you to, to challenge you in 2020 that you would get with a study group ask God to send you somewhere. Some of us, we're, we're uh, members of our churches and, and we have a spe special call on our life 
and the church has no program for it. It has no, uh, no incentive for you to be motivated and trained in that area. Then that means then you need to be asking God to send you to a place uh, where you can get that training. Some places God has us assigned to, that's our working station. Sometimes our working station is not designed to be our feeding station. Or we like to eat and feed at the same station we serve. Oh, I need this to be done, this to be done. But sometimes God will send you to a place and say, you got to eat over here but serve over there. So don't get your serve, your service co-mingled with you being ministered to because you'll feel shortchanged. So we want to do that. I, I uh, was in my library the other day, in fact, this morning, reading back on uh, the Apostolic Handbook, Your Personal Voyage to Apostolic Office by uh, Colette Coach, Colette, Colette Toach, T-O-A-C-E, T-O-A, T-O-A-C-H, Colette Toach. The Apostolic Handbook, this is a handbook that really talks about the apostles apostleship. What is an apostle? The different varieties of, of definitions to what it means to be an apostle. What are the challenges to the apostle? What is the work of an apostle? Um, what, what, what is it that apostles have to face in their relationship with God? Uh, how do an apostle lay their own foundation? And uh, how do Apostles own their own mandate. Sometimes, you know, we don't even own our own mandate. God sometimes comes to us, not only as apostles, but as believers, and he gives us a mandate. This is what I want you to do. He gives us a mandate, and because of people, places, and things, we lose the mandate. Or we lose the momentum that comes with the mandate, and we're just sitting around, hemming and hawing, because we have lost the momentum of the magnet of the mantle that was assigned to a given situation in ministry. One of the things that's important that uh, we begin to understand the role of the apostle as a strong leader, a strong mentor, and understand their calling. So I want you, those of you, uh, Amazon has this, but I want you to get it. Add it to your library. Those of you that are apostles, uh, God has called you to the apostleship. There, there are some good books out there, John Eckhart, Paula Price, uh, and others that are teaching and training and the whole concept of the apostolic when it comes down to not the denomination, but the apostolic as a movement with uh, those persons that's in those uh, uh, workshops and seminars and classes to take informational training to be more improved on what an apostle is and what apostle does and what ap apostolic means. What is sonship? What is daughtership? There's a difference between being a mentor and a spiritual father. A difference between being a spiritual, a spiritual father and an apostolic father. Those are the varieties of things talked about in this book. And then, if you cannot submit yourself to a person in the body of Christ of high caliber as, as an apostle, you, well, why would God give you the authority to become an apostle? And you can't submit yourself to one because a lot of work goes in to this whole concept. So I'm asking you to take a look, consider this book, or and maybe another book on apostolic Ministry. I'm, what 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 happens because God has called me to be an apostle. And then some of us, you know, we're so caught up, especially in the African American tradition. We uh, our churches, you know, either if they were strong enough to hear me out, my millennials and my and my uh, younger people than me. I'm the baby boomer at 68, but those in their 60s and lower, hear me out. Hear, hear me out. One of the things that was important for us is that we have to understand what group of people God is calling us to because there's so many varieties in that one group. So many varieties of personalities. 
so many varieties of, of situations and circumstances. And we need to be on board. We need to be on board as members of the body of Christ, understanding our task. And based upon our task, this is our title. And so based upon our title, this is what I need to be about and doing in order for me to show forth some sense of productivity. So you need to get this book. Um, also, she has a book on the fivefold. Pick up some books on, on, on the apostle, apostleship and fivefold. Look at Google, Google it. Go to your bookstore. Start reading more. Start studying more. Ask God to give you insight to his word. Ask God to give you uh, an anointing. I pray today a special anointing on some of you all that needs to be writers and scribes, uh, that needs to put out material. So we'll know and others will know, well, there's, there's a book out. Here's a teaching over here. Here's a train over there because I have to come to the unity of the faith. And so when I find something that's good and encouraging for me, that I have to release it and give it to some of my brothers and sisters so that they can also utilize it. That's called collaborating. So collaboration is the ability to come together from different walks of life and have certain people who call the shots. Well, if you get your esteem issues all together, if you're matured, you're not frustrated about who calls the shots. You know, well, I was over here, blah, blah, blah. And you know that person, they had a nerve enough to pull a gun on me. They had the nerve enough to do this, and they had the nerve to do that. They had the nerve to do, oh, well, then, that means then that you have to be qualified enough to be strong enough to withstand all the fiery darts that come at you. Just because you save and love the Lord and do what you do does not mean that you're going to be exempt from challenges in life. And so I want you to really begin in 2020. If you're not studying with anybody, get you a study partner. Attend a Bible school. Attend a Bible institute. Ask God to send you to a ministry that's teaching so you can cross-fertilize yourself because sometimes we feel like this group over here, if you're not clear and honest, they'll make you think they're the only ones. It's got to be their way, how they see it, how they interpret it, or it's the highway. When no, we need to come together, begin to build, and keep building, and keep sharing, and keep working together, and keep praying together, and keep touching and agreeing together so God gets the glory, and he begins to get the glory out of our lives. And he blesses us with the things we need as we bring in and implement the kingdom in a larger sphere. So for 2020, I need to ask myself, number one, who am I aligned with? Who am I aligned with? Who, who am I, I aligned with? Uh, number two, who is it that I must interrelate with? Number three, who, who am I to mentor? I'm supposed to be making disciples. Who is it that I must mentor? Who is it that I make disciples? Where, where is my uh, student? Where is my mentee? You might have to ask yourself the question, where is my teacher? Where is my mentor? But we all need to be related some kind of a way to be growing to make sure that God is blessing us, that God is delivering us, and God is doing some things in our lives as we meet with other brothers and sisters in the faith. We begin to see God at work in his variety of styles and his variety of modalities and his varieties of how he works. If he says, my thoughts are not your thoughts and my ways are not your ways, but as far as the east is from the west, so my thoughts is removed from you. We got to stop trying to figure out what God is thinking and just go ahead and do what God tells us. Does that sound fair? And so that's what I want uh, my prayer for you as we move into a new, whole new season. And as I said, the day is 
there's a day that God has made, but he gives us strength to continue, then let us begin to make our call and an election sure. Let's say, Brenton, in 2020, there's some things that's been on my heart. I need to get into it. I need to look at it. I need to research it. I need to talk about it. I need to share. I need to find a workshop or a seminar or something that's going to be very important as I move forward and reading and exhortation and doctrine as Paul told his son to do until he come again. So we don't have to wait and be threatened until our spiritual father come or come again. There's just certain things that he's that we've been challenged to do. And we need to begin to do it. And we need, some of us, we need to take a class. We need to go to that webinar. We need to, to go to a seminar. We need to, some of us, it requires us to travel. Some of us, it requires us to, to block out the same old, same old, because God is trying to broaden your horizons. He wants you to do something greater. But at the same time, you're comfortable at just sitting and waiting for God to do something with you on another level and God hasn't showed you at all with this process that this was the level he wanted you with. So, this is very crucial that as we moving into 2020 that we have the right mindset, the right sensitivities of what we ought to be doing in this season of 2020. Starting right now, moving into January 1, God, what is it that I can do in an excellent manner? I need to do something. I need to do it with excellence. I'm going to work with this in excellence. In excellence. That means I've got to study. i got to be mentored. I have to study and read. i got to move around. For some of us, got to move around in the body of Christ and see what uh, what you need. As you begin to, one of the things you will notice as you study God's word and study it, and if you study with the right group, certain things will start becoming alive to you. You'll find yourself saying, hmm, I didn't know that. Ooh, I never saw that before. Wow, that's a revelation. Because the way we used to think has been tied in with our evangelical life self where this is where it is, this is our answer, this is the question, this is the answer, this expectation, and then this is the way it is, and, and blah, 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 rather than saying, okay, we need some input. God, what are you saying? In the multitude of counselors, there's safety. And so, God, where do I fit? What is it that you have for my life? And how do I get connected with the right resource person that can provide for me some resource material. That's going to be very important. Where do I get the material needed to do my assignment? And then based upon me doing my assignment, who are the people that's working with me and dad to enable him to do his assignment? What is it then? So we have our spiritual dads, our spiritual mothers, our apostolic fathers, our, our spiritual cousins and brothers in the faith. We get together and talk, talk about a lot of things and this, 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 and we brainstorm it. And then we leave a meeting and we go and go the same way we came. That's not, that's not correct. That's not the way God has called us to be. We don't engage ourselves only to disengage later. He expects us to be moving, maturing, and working together step by step by step by step by step by movement. Paul said, I count my, not myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I know, this is one thing I do. I forget those things that are behind and I reach to those things that are before I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling. So I'm constantly pressing. In my press, I constantly let the Holy Spirit uh, empower me. I constantly am aware of the Holy Spirit correcting me. Constantly aware of the Holy Spirit talking to me because it's out of that time. So what happens is people around us that we encounter on a regular basis, 
they know whether we got the goods or not. They know. They, you, you, you ain't going to be able to fool people. They, we have too many mature brothers and sisters out here in the faith. Thank you, my brothers and sisters, for those of you that have taken time out to study God's word, to substitute things out of God's word, and to be growing and being matured not only out of God's word, but in fellowship, in fellowship with other ministries and ministers that is doing something like we're doing, or do find people that are singing your song, that's singing your song, just like you sing it. And then when you identify with those persons, then you should join and be a part or be connected in some kind of way. So I wanted to kind of uh, probe into, two, into 2020, into 2020, and say, okay, there's some things that we need to begin to look at, some things we need to begin to work at, some things we need to know. Uh, and so I encourage you to get out your study. Some of you all need to get a journal so you can write down your thoughts as you read and study or encounter people, places, and things. Write down your thoughts. You'd be surprised what you wrote down and, 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 and what you put in uh, when you go back and start reading it and thinking it through. You'd be like, wow, I said that. Uh-huh. Wow. Okay, okay. So that helps you to know that now that I'm moving forward, I'm studying, I'm reading, my mindset is changing now. I'm, I'm able to be more pliable. I'm not as rigid as I used to be. I can see things from both, both angles. I can receive information from different directions and not be intimidated, but only find out from God after all that has been taken care of, what shall I do? How shall I do it? Sometimes it's not knowing the what, but it's knowing, at least it's knowing the how and the when. The how and the when. When can you do it and how do you want to do it? So we uh, wanted to take that time out to share that part with you. One of the other things that I want to share with you is asking yourself, have you maximized your potential? Have you masterized your potential, your gifts, your calls? Sometimes the capacity to be maximized is directly related with pain and suffering. And you trying to get around that and trying to keep everything hunky-dory. No, 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 no. That's not how it goes. You got to know that when God puts you into a place, assigns you to purpose that every now and then you will have to push past your feelings past what people say and God will give you connection how to make connection with the right people to help you fulfill the vision that he's given you the vision and the dream that he's given the whole house so look at it 2020, tell somebody, 2020 is my year. 2020, I've got to really be serious and ask God to give me wisdom and direct me toward his priority in my life. Can you do that? Can you ask God to show you his priority. That's where we got to go. Paul said, we know, we was out there and after we was in Asia Minor, we were on the ship and we was going, and we were saved to go to Bethunia. Bethunia was, was Bethunia, Bethunia, it was just a little small town right down the street. We could run in there and preach, maybe get an offering and come on out and, uh, 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 the Holy Spirit was like no it said the Holy Spirit suffered them not to go everybody that reaches out to you that wants you to be a part of them and wants you to help them uh, I'm sure if you really take a look you will say sometimes you don't feel it you don't feel the nudge you know it's good you know they're going to have church you know that's going to be a good place to be 
but for some reason, somehow, in your mindset, you just don't feel comfortable or released to be a part of that particular program or particular ministry or particular opportunity. You must be able and know that you've got to follow your heart. You got to follow the drive that's with you. You got to begin to discern and understand what is God saying to me in these matters. And so whatever he's saying to me in these matters, that's what I've got to be about the business to do. And he will provide for me a provision for the vision. So let's keep that in mind. One of the things that um, I've been concerned about as I look around the community uh, and what we've been going through, the impeachment of a president and others, folks has been you know, talking about a lot of things and they want to know. And I think this is a time for God's men and women uh, to seek his face, to have some clarity on what's taking place, the prophets to be on, on their posts and the pastors to be on their posts and evangelists, all, all of the body of Christ to be on their posts uh, and, and let God use you and speak through you and use someone else to bless you as each one of you all work together for somebody's good. And we know that all things work together for the good. To them that love the Lord, to them that are called to his purpose. I am uh, challenging you to not get caught up in the hype of, well, you know, we're going to let prayer back into school. Don't, don't get caught up in that. Well, we're going to we're gonna sing some Christian songs. Don't, 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 don't get caught. Well, we're gonna do this and this, something that is not directly related to your specific call in ministry. Know your specific call. Once you find that out, then you need to support it. You need to protect it. You need to maintain it. A lot of us, God has gifted, but we don't, we don't protect it and maintain it. We just out there doing our thing, doing this is our routine. And so the little routine that we make our little stops here, 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 and here is, is, is that's all we, that, that's going to happen today or in this season because it's a routine. No, 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 no. It is a positioning by God for your purpose and destiny as to where God wants to take you and where God wants to put you. Did you, did, did you hear what I said? God want to take you and put you some places. And you must sometimes yield to his will. You've got to yield to his, his will. So I want to take some time out to challenge you on that. Now, the reason why I said that is to get back to what's happening in our world and our country today. We have to be uh, people that are the light of the world, the salt on the earth, to speak truth to power, uncompromising truth to power. We've got to be able to do that. We've got to be able to see how things are going, take a look at and have an answer to the community at large as just what's taking place. We know we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers in the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. We, we know that there's certain... Uh, uh, people assign certain places, but at the same time, we must ask ourselves the question that all of these, what I want to call actors, are part of this presentation. God, what do you, why do you have this one here, that one there, this one here, that one there? We had, we had our discussion in our Sunday school class about that, and uh, they did brought it. Well, Dr. Brinson, what you think about Trump? Well, I, you know, I really haven't got even any thoughts, really thoughts, uh, because um, I realize that God is sovereign in the affairs of man. I believe that God uh, is using Trump at this moment in time to effect his will and his purpose that's already been predetermined. So... When people ask me, I say, well, we, you know, he got an office through the vote. Uh, God said, pray for your leaders. He's our leader. We will 
pray for him, but at the same time, we don't want to put ourselves in a predicament where we are idol worshiping. See, it's a difference between respect and, and, and idol worship, because some folks see him as their idol, and he's not an idol. He has problems just like you and I, no difference, no difference. It may be on a different level, on a different floor, around a more expensive environment, but the, but the questions or the issues are the, pretty much the same. So I say, okay, God said pray for those persons. The Bible said pray for those people that are in government so that you may have peace. Well, because Trump is in the White House, that means God has a reason for him to be in the White House. But I see what else God is doing because sometimes, you know, you can be somewhere, but your character is so messed up. Your character, your personality just is what it is. Huh? So let's look at it. So I believe that what God does is he, in the midst of no matter who's who and who's in the who's who, he always have a way of checking you when you start getting out of hand. You just check on, he's not check on you, just check you. You out of hand. So even though you my man, you out of hand. So I'm gonna allow certain things to happen to you while you're on your watch that you will never shake down. You will never shake down because you're not at the place where you want me to be. You're not at the place where I want you to be. I want you to be at a certain place and you're not at that place. So I'm gonna allow certain things to come in your path and come in your way. So when we talk about the Trump piece and we looking at, uh, at this point, uh, the impeachment uh, and all of those things, I still believe that God is somehow working that out for the good, that, uh, that this must be, these dynamics must play out because one of the things is showing me that no matter what happens, no matter who's in charge, no matter how much you make and money and, 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 and do certain things and leave people out and go and hurt and, and try to help certain people, God is still in God is in control. I believe he's in control. And I believe that this situation is a sign to all of the believers wherever we are in the world, that he's still in control. And if you lean on the arms of flesh, they will fail you every time. But God is still in control. And because when God hires you out as a servant to do his will and his biddings, what happens? He will give you the provisions and the visions and information needed as to why are you doing what you do? Why are you doing what you do? How are you doing what you do? So you all have to take a look. Let's look at the world, look at what's around us. Then read the historical books uh, that we go to historically, Daniel and Revelation and certain other scriptures. Read them and see what the last days are and see what it says about the last days. Uh, and when you put all that together, you'll see that it's, it's unfolding right in front of us. We're, we're back to uh, people celebrating that they're putting prayer and Bible study back into the schools. Uh, Kentucky and certain states have voted that. Well, then we need to be proactive. And those of us who feel like God has anointed us and gifted us to teach Bible, then we ought to be putting together some stuff to do that. Um, just because, you, you know, one of the things I wanted to say is that, well, Preston, we're going to have Bibles in the school. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. We're going to have Bibles in the school. See, we, got, we have, oh, oh, well, just because you have Bibles in the school don't mean people are going to read them, understand them. That doesn't mean that. You can have, how, how many Bibles are in the hotels? How many hotels are there across America? And how many Bibles, in fact, 
Let's ask, let me ask you a question. If you ever traveled and you was put up at a hotel or a motel or whatever, and you went through uh, what you do to put your, and you saw a Bible, did you stop and sit down and say, oh, here's a Bible in my room. Let me sit down and read it and get some revelation. You'd be like, move this over. I got to put my stuff in there. You'd be gone. So just because they put Bibles or make Bibles a readiness to uh, uh, everybody or the people at the school or wherever they are proving that, the question is going to be, who teaches? Who teaches? That's going to be the main question. Who puts together the curriculum and how do we understand it? You know, because when it comes down to education and training, you know, when you're not even talking about the Bible, just other issues, people are flunking, getting bad grades and this and that. I know certain people that went to Bible college, Bible school, and flunked out. They got Fs. So just because you have a Bible or you carry a Bible or, or you say you read so many verses of a Bible don't mean that your heart has been changed. The question is, will that Bible being in that school change hearts? Will it change hearts? So we're living in a time and a season where there's a great challenge in the land. God has allowed a president to be in, and yet at the same time, if you really look at it, it starts with inconsistencies in government. Those of you that have not forgot, you remember when Trump was elected, not Trump, when Obama was elected president. Do you remember? Do you remember when Obama was elected president and some of the senators and the Republicans got together, McConnell and others, and said, we're, well, he was elected. And they said, we're here to make sure he is a one-term president. They locked up everything because of his race. They questioned his birthright. They disrespected his wife. They talked about her. They used certain, they actually disrespected the office of the president. And so when you disrespect the office of the president, you put that principality in motion so there's a disrespect on the office. And so here we are. If you look at the office of the president right now, is there respect on the office of the president? The same people now are going, that are holding court are some of the same people uh, that said, over my dead body, Obama, well, we're going to make sure he passed nothing, he gets nothing done. We're going to shut him up, shut him out. God said two years. And he wasn't God, but he was just God's servant at the moment. Trump is not God. He's just God's servant at the moment. Now, you need to take notes. Some of you all that are Bible scholars, you need to you know, start reading uh, about the end times and start reading about the nations. And you will get a better understanding of what I'm saying. So some of us, we're just not really frustrated, frustrated. I told some of our brothers and sisters, you know, some of you all gonna have to get up and start doing right. You're gonna, you're gonna have to stop meeting us. You know what you do around the first of the month. You're gonna have to stop meeting us at the store saying, uh, you wanna trade off? I'll give you so many uh, food stamps. I'll give you so many snap credits for so much cash. And some of you all, you know, you, you getting your credits and you working. You're not reporting your income, and some of you are not required. You're not uh, at a at cannot meet the requirements because of your statute and where you are. But you go around the you go around the mountain and you get it done anyway. So that's bribery. Right there. So the question begins to be, okay, God is ultimately in control. He resides and participates in the affairs of men. And so, therefore, no weapon formed against us, members of the body of Christ, shall prosper in every tongue that do the wag. I'm going to condemn it. If it rises up against you, you condemn it. 
So there's a partnership. You need to be condemning certain things in your life and circumstances. Other things you have to understand is not going to affect you, even though it's around you, because the Bible said no weapon formed. So we got to keep those things in mind. So as we coming out of 2019, we're moving into 2020. 20. We're moving to 2020. My ultimate challenge and prayer to you, my brothers and sisters, that we begin to unify and begin to fellowship with each other and one another. Build coalitions and collaboratives and begin to uh, move together with one accord in your areas. And you'll begin to see God making some changes in your life and your ministry and your surroundings because when you get into the right group and the right support group, it, it fulfills a total need of who you are. Some of you all that are out there that are frustrated let me say to you, be healed in Jesus' name. Just be healed. Tell yourself, be healed. Brinson, I, I'm not, uh-uh. I've been hurt by the church. Yeah, probably so. I, I won't uh, debate that. But you've been hurt by other things as well. The church is the body of Christ. We need to come together. There needs to be an assemblage of together. Well, I, 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 I love God. I'm saved. I'm Christian. And I just had church by myself. Uh oh, that's the spirit of Antichrist. The spirit of Antichrist is anything that's anti Christ. And Christ is the head of the church. So if you anti church, you anti the head of the church, which means you are anti Christ, which means you are an Antichrist. That means you operate and walk in the spirit of the Antichrist. That when Paul wrote and said, is now in the earth. The spirit of Antichrist, when he was right, is now in the earth. It's, 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 it's in the earth. The attitude toward the church, if it is a negative attitude toward the church in general, is a negative toward Christ. So we need to understand it. We need to find out, 1 Corinthians 12, what role we play in the body of Christ. What role do we play? What, where, what are we? Are we a hand? Are we a foot? Are we a finger? Are we a head? A knee? What, what role in the body? If we would put a body, <coughs> if we would hang up a body, uh, put a body on the wall, what part of the body would you be? Based upon your gifts, your talents, and graces, based upon how God uses you, or used to use you, regardless of that, what part of the body would you be? Would you be an elbow to help people bend more, two other people to bend a, a knee, but to help two entities connect? Are you a connector? Would you be a, a hand to hold, to, to, to fingers to scratch, a hand to hold? What role would you play? In the body of Christ. And at the same time, I want to put this out there. What roles would you allow? What persons in the body of Christ that are in certain roles would you accept and allow to speak into your life? Well, I'm an apostle. And so who's your pastor? Well, I'm an apostle. And so who's your prophet? When I'm an apostle, well, who, who's your teacher? When I'm an apostle, who evangelizes? Who, who, you know, the fivefold equips the saints to do the work of the ministry. And equipping, to me, it means a process. It's not a one-time happening. Well, I've been equipped. No, if you've been equipped, if you become equipped, guess what? You got to maintain the status of the level of your equipping. And then you have to be challenged to grow and mature and receive more information as it relates to those things that you have been a call to equip. So there is no sitting around. There's always movement in the kingdom. There is always movement, always movement, always movement. What are you called to move? What are you called to be a part that is moving? What's your call? What's your call? 
you got a couple of more days to answer that question. So when you walk into 2020, you'll know this is what I'm called to do. This is what I'm chosen to do. This is what I, I, I'm ordained by God to do. So let me put myself in a position so when those who come to me uh, and ask me about my, that ask me to put me in a program to become licensed or ordained, I still would have some, some, add some understanding of my purpose and my destiny. And I'm going to do what God told me to do. So if I need to get my credentials to be certified, I need to do that. If I need, you know, everybody else gets certification. If I need to go back to school for this and this, I'm going to do that. If I need to get more rest during the week, I'm going to do that. If I need to change my diet, I'm going to do that. For you all that are getting ready to go on the 21-day fast, the Daniel fast, when you come off of it, do me a favor. Do a Daniel fast every month. You know, just spend, take certain days where you just don't eat no meat. You'll feel better. Just, just take the Daniel fast concept and spread it throughout the whole year. Take that concept and you'll be, you'll see yourself because you'll begin to feel better because you're eating healthier. I didn't say eating healthier, that means there's always room for improvement. Keep this in mind, that as we move into 2020, there is always room for improvement. God help me. God enlarge my territory. God give me the wisdom that I need that I may improve upon those things that you have given me, those prophetic words that I have given, the words that you have been given, that your prophets have given me uh, and challenged me to. Help me to realize them this year. 2020, help me to really understand that that's, this is a year that you have made and we enter it in joy. We, some of us, may have certain challenges, but we enter it in joy. So 2020 for you has to be a time where you say, I am being renewed. 2020 of this new year has to be a time where you can rejoice. 2020 of this new year has to be a time when God begins to open your eyes so you can see, you can become more prophetic, not pathetic, but more prophetic in your life. 2020 has to be a year where we're more discerning. We're discerning of the spirit that's operating behind certain people and places and things. 2020 has to be a time where you completely say, yes, Lord, to your will. Can you say yes? Will you say yes? Will all of you say yes? Will you join me as we in this program and say, Brinson, I stand with you today and I say yes. That's that song. I say yes, I'll say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey. When the Spirit speaks to me with my whole heart, I'll agree and my answer will be yes, Lord, Yes. Yes to your call. Yes to your will. Yes to the empowerment that you want to give me. Yes to the direction you want to take me. Yes to the things that you have showed me that I must upgrade. Yes, 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 yes. 2020, tell God yes. Say another yes. Well, God, Brinson, I've been saying yes all this time. Well, say it again, but this time say it with new meaning. New, new, new meaning, new understanding, new perception, new, new abilities. And so as we move this place, we pray that you would go out, that you would walk it and talk it, live it and give it, preach it and teach it, know it and act like it and be the one that God has called you to be in this time, in this season, as we move into the year 2020 doing what God wants us to do, clearly sensitive to our assignments, and so it is.